and welcome to tcgplayer.com. This is Craig Wesco recording, and today we're going to be playing a green-white value deck in Modern. So this is a deck that was popularized uh, by Todd Stevens. He's been advocating and streaming with it and playing it a lot. Uh, we're actually going to use two different versions today. This is the version we're going to use for the first three matches. Uh, it's a version that Michael Preminger used to uh, top eight regionals. And then we're going to switch to another list uh, for the last two matches. But it's the same deck, it's just a few changes. Uh, so this list, basically the, the, the idea of the deck is to just generate a bunch of value and outvalue the opponent. So it's kind of like a, a Jund or an Abzan deck, just without a third color. So you're just straight green-white. Uh, it's a little different than Hate Bears. Um, it doesn't have Leonin Arbiter, that's the main one. And instead of having Ether Vial, it just has cards like Birds of Paradise. Uh, so one of the other differences that kind of makes the deck tick is Knight of the Reliquary. So you want to play turn one Mana Producer, either Birds of Paradise or Noble Hierarch. And then you want to generally play Knight of the Reliquary on turn two. And then from that point, you can kind of do a whole bunch of different things. So against decks where the land destruction is, is really important, you have four copies of Ghost Quarter that you can fetch with Knight of the Reliquary. And then once you fetch them and start killing the opponent's lands, then you can get them back and replay them with Ramanap Excavator. So you can kind of landlock the opponent with this combo. And the other thing that's really cool is Corsair of Crufix allows you to generate value in just the, the fair matchups where you're just playing this long value grindy game. Uh, and you're also gaining life, which helps you against the aggressive decks and the decks with uh, burn spells, things like that. Um, but it's also a way of uh, continually gaining an advantage. So you're going to be drawing basically a spell every turn because you can filter lands off the top of your deck. And you have seven fetch lands in this deck, which is another benefit to not running a card like Leonin Arbiter. And the, the fetches allow you to not only gain life from the Corsair, but also to reset the top card of your deck. So if, let's say, there's a, a Noble Hierarch on top of your deck, and you're like, well, I don't really want to draw that, well, you can just shuffle it away with a, by cracking a fetch land. And then if the top card of your land after the fetch is a land, you just play the land. And if it's not a land, then, well, you found another spell. Uh, so that's one thing that you can do. Um, another thing that's cool about Knight of the Reliquary is you can fetch Gavany Township. And since you have a bunch of birds and noble hierarchs, and just, you know, you're a predominantly creature-heavy deck, we have 28 creatures, it's a way to fetch uh, this and then suddenly make all your creatures bigger. And so you, you know, fetch on the end step, tap all your, cre you know, your bird and your noble and your lands, um, to pump your team, then untap and activate again, and suddenly all your creatures basically have plus two, plus two, and you can just attack the opponent and kill them in you know two hits or whatever. So that, uh, that's a really important part of the game plan is this one township, uh, and since we have four knights to find it, we can reliably uh, go on the township plan basically every game, even though we just have one copy. Um, and even if they kill it, we have Remnant Excavator to get it back. So it's, it's a pretty reliable engine. Um, the other card that we often fetch is Horizon Canopy. And this also works once you get the, the whole engine going, and you have like a Corsair of Crufix on the battle, battlefield, and Knight of the Reliquary on the battlefield. And then you don't have to have an Excavator on the battlefield, but that kind of is the third part of the combo. Um, but even if you don't have that, and you just have the Knight and the Corsair, well, you can... Let's say the, the top of your library is a card you want to draw. Say it's a collected company or something. Well, you just leave it on top and you draw it. Uh, but if it's not, well, you can shuffle the card away by activating the knight. And then once you do, you, you fetch out a horizon canopy. And then let's say the top card of your library is a spell that you want. You can then just sack the canopy that you searched out and draw it immediately. So let's say there's a path to exile on top and you really need to kill a creature. You just find it, you path their creature. Um, it's also a way of just digging toward collected companies, which then just set up the rest of the combo. So the deck has, you know, a lot of kind of synergistic inner working pieces, uh, which work out really well together. But at its heart, it's a value deck. And so you even have more value creatures. You have Renegade Rallier. So one of the cool plays that you can make is you can just go turn one noble or bird. Uh, turn two, you play a fetch land and sack it. 
to get your, your second land, and you tap the two lands and the mana producer to play Rallier. And since you crack the fetch land, that triggers Revolt, and then you could just get the uh, fetch land back into play. So it's essentially like you're playing Wood Elves, but it's a 3-2 instead of a 1-1. One, one. So that's a pretty big advantage. And then if you, let's say, uh, crack a fetch and cast Collected Company, and you hit like a Renegade Rallier and now to the Reliquary, well, the Rallier can get back like a Tarmogoyf or a Voice of Resurgence or just, you know, a fetch land or whatever. Um, so there's a lot of value plays in this deck where if you set it up, the Collected Companies can hit really big and you can even hit an Eternal Witness to get back the Collected Company. Um, so there's just so much that this deck can do in terms of value. And of course, Voice of Resurgence, like that's like the best two mana value play, basically. Um, they play a spell in your turn, you get an Elemental. They try to kill the Voice, you get an Elemental. Um, Tarmogoyf's not really a value creature, but I mean, he's just a very large creature for two mana. Um, so this version runs it, the other version does not. Scavenging you is a way to disrupt the graveyard. A lot of people are playing Culligan's Command, Snapcaster Mage, things like that. So this is a way to disrupt that. Um, you can find it off the company, Path to Exile, most efficient removal spell in the format. Um, so that's all the main deck. The sideboard, uh, I don't want to get too much into it. I want to talk about the other version of the deck. But, you know, Selfless Spirit, if they're trying to kill your creatures, you know, Anger of the Gods, Supreme Verdict, things like that, Damnation. Thalia against all the spell decks, Storm's a big deck, Ad Nauseam. Um, Mind Sensor against decks that search their library a lot, so there's uh, Tron type decks, Valakit type decks, things like that. Linvala against any deck with creatures that have activated abilities, so the, uh, a lot of the company type decks, and uh, also Elves, um, things of that nature. Set all the wreckage against decks that just try to attack us with a bunch of creatures and we're on the defense, where it's kind of a grindy, we can play the grindy controlling game pretty effectively. Um, the one downside to this card is that they see it coming if you have a courser, uh, so that's kind of awkward, but it is what it is. Um, Nissa, just more value. Sometimes you just want even more value. Um, scavenging use, more graveyard hate against the you know Snapcaster decks and Culligan's Command, things like that. Dramoka's Command, It's uh, we have one main deck as well. It's against burn spells and also a way to counter uh, a card like Anger of the Gods, um, Gaddock Teague against decks like Ad Nauseam or Supreme Verdict, um, decks that just you know play a spell that they really rely on um, resolving. It's a big spell they can't cast. And uh, it, there is a Nambo with Collected Company. If you have the Gaddock Teague in play, you can't cast your Collected Company. But in the matchups where we're bringing in Gaddock Teague, that's not going to come up because like if, if we have a Teague in play, they can't beat us. So they have to deal with the Teague. Uh, in order to cast their spells to beat us. So if we have a Teague on the board, we can't cast our Collected Company. Who cares? We're winning. We have Teague on the board. Um, but then Collected Company is another way of finding our one Teague. Because if you have one, well, you're not going to find it very much. But if you have four companies in one Teague, that's five. So you are going to find it quite often. Um, especially when you're casting these clump uh, Collected Companies um, multiple times in a game. So even though it seems like a Nambo, it's really not uh, in the matchups where you really need the Teague. Uh, Pride Mage, you can find it. Great against Affinity, great against Ethervile, great against Spreading Seas, great against you know any deck that relies on enchantment, ad nauseum sometimes. Um, really good against Affinity because it can Affinity because it can kill any of their artifacts, their cranial pleading, uh, or it could also kill the enchantment that they bring in, the gear part ether grid. Finks, <laughs> again, you know, this deck loves value, um, especially creatures you can hit off collected company. Um, so you can bring that in in attrition matchups just because it's a creature that comes back um, or against decks where the life gain is relevant. Then Revoker is just another creature you can hit off company that can act as a pithing needle, um, basically turn off any key planeswalker or an activated ability. Sometimes I'll name Relic of Progenitus because uh, the card's pretty good against our, our value in graveyard stuff. So this is the first version we're going to try and we're going to briefly talk about the changes in the second version here. Um, so basically, we play two more Birds of Paradise. Uh, I think the mana is basically the same. We cut Temple Garden for a forest. Now, this version is basically a conglomeration of all the different versions that are doing well. I just wanted to try to kind of try what everyone else is doing. So this is more or less a stock list. Um, cut the Tarmogoyfs uh, in favor of like more birds and also to try out some of these other one-ofs, like uh, one Mind Sensor. 
um, one Azusa. So Azusa, uh, something that she does, it she allows you to really go off. She's kind of the last piece of, you know, you assemble everything and you just have it all. So basically you have the, uh, the Courser, so you're looking at the top card of your deck, and then if it's a land, you're playing it. And then if you have the, the Knight, you can reset the Courser and find all the lands you want, all your Ghost Quarters, your Horizon Canopies and whatnot. And then the Ramanap Excavator allows you to replay those Canopies that you sack to draw a card, replay them from your graveyard. The Ghost Quarters that you sack to kill the opponent's land, you get to replay those from the graveyard. And um, then Azusa allows you to play two additional lands a turn. So... Um, once you have the, the excavator, you could just, you know, play Ghost Quarter, kill your land. Play Ghost Quarter, kill your land. Play Ghost Quarter, kill your land. So you're killing three of their lands every turn when you have this combo. This excavator plus Azusa. Um, and then Horizon Canopy, kind of the same thing, but instead of killing three of their lands, you are uh, drawing three cards off the canopy. Um, so that's kind of a, she's the last piece of the combo that just really lets you go off. Um... It, you know, it might be a little bit of win more, but um, it, that, that combination has actually been very beneficial to me in, in some of the matchups where, like, you're not really out of the woods. Like, they have all their, their, they have, like, six lands or something, and you know that they could just top deck a big spell um, to get back into the game and just kill three of their lands, and the next turn kill the other three of their lands, and now they have no lands. So they're just dead. Um, so it kind of closes the door and doesn't allow them to top deck out of the situation. Since this deck is a heavy attrition deck, the games can go long. So that's actually been pretty useful. I, I'm kind of happy with the one Azusa. Legendary, so you, you don't want too many. Some versions run two, but I just like one. And the last addition to the main deck was Tireless Tracker. Um, so this is another way of just you know, gaining a bunch of cards in the mid game to beat the the other slower attrition decks. Um, so Knight of the Reliquary, you can go tap the knight, search out uh, a fetch land, get a clue. Sack the fetch land, get a, uh, to search out like a forest, get another clue. Okay, and now uh, uh, I will play my fetch land for the turn, get a clue. Sack it, get a, get a forest, get another clue. So that's four clues. On my turn so i'm basically getting four clues a turn if i just have you know a knight and then every time you're getting lands from your graveyard with the excavator you're making more clues and you're going to have a, a random fetch land in your graveyard because we have seven of them uh, so then you're just playing the random fetch land so you're getting two clues a turn uh, just off of the, the excavator getting you a land so then since you're getting all these extra lands in play and then you're you know, able to produce all this mana and you're getting a clue for every every land that enters the battlefield. You just have endless clues and a bunch of mana. So you just sack them all and start drawing cards. And you're just basically drawing like three or four cards a turn. And so that's just another really value way of just getting pulling really far ahead of the opponent. Um, so the deck got super grindy uh, and the sideboard made a lot of changes. Stony Silence, big deal against Affinity. Um, can come in also against like Tron, Ad Nauseam, things like that. Uh, Mind Sensor, another card against like Valakit and decks that search the library. I had a lot of rhetoric. Um, Storm decks are, are getting big now, so that's a way to stop that. Also, Living End, um, Linvala, we already talked about that. Elspeth, she's kind of the, the Trump to be all Trumps in the uh, like the Death Shadow matchup, uh, Eldrazi matchup. Um, just any deck where they have creatures that can die to the minus three ability, you pretty much want this. And then just being able to completely outvalue like the Jund and Abzan decks are bringing it in, in that matchup. We can actually cast Elspeth as early as turn three. We can go turn one bird, turn two bird noble, turn three land. Hey, that's six mana. So turn three Elspeth, not too bad. Uh, Surgical Extraction comes in against any sort of graveyard combo deck uh, or any deck that's uh, really reliant on a single spell that we can uh, nab out of the graveyard. Um, can also be a way to effectively disrupt Tron uh, in that matchup, because we can Ghost Quarter a Tron piece and then exile it. Uh, I'm still not certain that that's a strategy that we want to use in that matchup, um, but it's there if we decide to. Reclamation Sage, we can get it off Collected Company, and it's a way to really good against Affinity. Another answer to uh, the Ethergrid. Um, same with Pride Mage. Sigarda, 
is really cool against all his dust because they can't make you sack permanents. Same with uh, Liliana of the Veil. So those uh, those basically aren't effective against you if you have Sigarda on the battlefield. And also a lot of decks just can't deal with a 5-5 five, five flying hexproof creature. So just one of there as kind of like the one of Elspeth where it's just a trump in those matchups. Um, not to be confused with... Um, well, we don't want to go there. Anyway, the uh, Engineered Explosives is the last card. And it's really good against Death Shadow. It's really good against uh, any deck like that plays Wild Nakadal, um, where they plan on playing a lot of creatures, either a lot of tokens that have mana cost zero or a lot of one one cast and cost creatures. And then sometimes if they have two cast and cost creatures, like if they have a lot of Tarmogoyfs and things like that, you can just sweep them all away. The one downside is that we have eight uh, one mana creatures. So, I mean, if we're killing, you know, a pair of Death Shadows, it's okay that we're going to lose a bird and a Noble Hierarch uh, to clean that up, because once we deal with that, you know, it's really hard for them to come back. Um, so it's okay, but it's uh, it does kind of backfire because we have one, two, and three mana creatures in our deck. So uh, anyway, th this is the deck. It's uh, it's it's kind of a value deck. It's it's a little more grindy than a green white hate bears type deck. Um, it plays more like an Abzan or a Jun type deck, um, but it's it's straight green white, and uh, I, I think you might be surprised at how attritiony it can be. So let's uh, take it for a spin. 